If you exist in the fandom long enough, you're bound to hear some kind of comparison between Joshua from Sacred Stones and Lewin from Genealogy of the Holy War. Joshua is often dubbed Lewin 2.0 due to the similar nature between his backstory and Lewin's, how they were both princes who fled their kingdom and due to circumstance meandered back into their mother's lives, and following that it's a moment of maturity, accepting their birthright, blah 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 blah, you get the picture. But while Lewin and Joshua are both well-loved characters, if you look at their mothers, you'll manage to find there's a distinct difference in popularity there. People remember Ismare, but Rana doesn't get nearly as much attention. And why is that? Well, here's the short answer. But personally, I thought Rana was cool enough to be highlighted, so I decided to do exactly that. So for all the 13 Rana fans out there, this is for you. Rana herself first appears in Chapter 4 of Genealogy of the Holy War, offering Sigurd refuge after Duke's fuckface and bastard man attempt to kill him on falsified charges. Her first scene has her coming to Sigurd for no other reason than to check on his well-being. She's been attempting to prove his innocence to the world, though her letters seem to not be reaching the king for some reason. She tries to keep Sigurd in good spirits, making conversation about the long-lost princess who is Arvis' new bride, and telling him to keep in good cheer despite the pain he's felt after losing his honor, and more importantly his wife, for over a year. From the word go, she's portrayed as this very kind, motherly figure. That is, however, until matters come to Lewin. He comes to her complaining that she can talk to Sigurd for hours, but won't even so much as glance at her own son. Her temper does a complete 180, as she is much more short and rude to him, even going so far as to deny that he's even there, saying her son ran off two years ago and never returned. Her anger is pretty justified, mind you. Lewin did just run away from home with no warning and leave his mother to pick up the pieces of an entire nation. Her current manner of dealing with him remains true for their entire interaction here, Though one of her knights divulges to Lewin that Rana is glad he's safe, she's just frustrated with him, which is honestly one of the most parent-like feelings someone can ever have. Her next scene in Chapter 4 comes after her castle has been conquered by her brother and then recaptured by Sigurd. She's feeling helpless at her inability to defend her people from her brother's cruel ambitions, but now it's Sigurd's chance to offer her peace of mind, saying that he'll handle her brother and save the kingdom. You know, as much as Sigurd's typical method of conquering the shit out of a nation constitutes as saving it. At this point, Lewin can come talk to her as well, and here she's a bit kinder to him, actually acknowledging that she's glad he's okay. Though her sharp tongue isn't completely lost. She remarks that Sigurd's influence is probably the only reason Lewin's more capable now, to which he brings up how Sigurd is hardly that much older than him. And her retort is one of my favorite lines of any minor F.E. character, saying, quote, My dear, compared to the likes of Sigurd, you may as well be a babbling infant. And again, her sharp critique of her son is not without merit. He was a coward who ran away from home. But regardless of his past, he's ready now, and she sees that he's ready to inherit his birthright of the most fair and balanced weapon in all of Fire Emblem. But though he wants to stay and help her, Rana refuses his protection and tells him to go with Sigurd. She says that Sigurd is the one that needs his power right now, and that he should go forth as the child of the wind and guide the world onto the right path. Though it clearly pains her to see her son after missing him for so long, she's a woman who knows what priorities should go over what. She is a queen before she is a mother, and so she will accept her personal pain to see the world guided on the right course. Though I do wonder if she knew what was in store for her son, would she have chosen to let him go with Sigurd. Her final scene is an attempt to help Sigurd once more after Duke's fuckface and bastard man are near their doorstep, but Sigurd says the time of her aid has come to an end. Should he remain in Selyse, he will only bring war to its doorstep. So in spite of all of the odds stacked against him, he has to go on the offensive. Before he goes, though, he says that Rana, to him, was the mother he never knew, saying that since he lost his own mother at a young age, Rana's wisdom and kindness gave him a warmth he had never felt before. The parent-child love is consensual, and Rana sees Sigurd off not as a noble would see a fellow noble, but as a mother would see her son ride off into the distance. 
all in all, Rana is a very kind woman who... Wait a minute, that's not the right panel. That's a Patreon advertisement for all of my content. Let me fix that. There! <clears throat> all in all, Rana is... Oh, hold on a minute, that's a list of all of my patrons, of which include... Green Brigand, Kieran Morin, Follow Pen to the North Star on Twitch, Nember, Ranger Man Sam, Ryan Walter, Steph D, Brentendo11, Drew Hack, Great Reek, and Rory O'Carroll. How the hell did that get there? Okay, let's fix it again. There! <clears throat> all in all, Rana is. Wait a minute, that's a slide showing the poll that just concluded, saying how the next major video is going to be on the Reed Brothers, Lloyd and Linus, and if you want to be able to participate in those polls, you should sub to the patron. Ah, God damn it, let's try this one more time. All in all, Rana is a very kind woman with more bite to her than your normal dainty noble. Not to mention the fact that she's a proper queen instead of just a princess. That's something that's pretty rare for Fire Emblem, especially back then. So why isn't she remembered all that much? Well, for starters, her just waving goodbye into the sunset isn't the strongest end impression. We complain that Fire Emblem kills off characters like Ismare or Grail because we would have loved to play as them, but the reason they're so memorable is because they died. We miss them and think about what could have been. So Rana isn't going to be as remembered as those NPCs due to the fact that she just kinda... goes home at the end of the day. The other issue, and the one that in my opinion is the bigger issue, is her time in the story and her time in the game don't sync up well at all. In game, Rana has been by Sigurd's side for a year. She's been someone that Sigurd's been talking to and relying on for a long time. The bond between them in that sense is very strong and natural. For the player? They were in Selyse for what? An hour? Maybe two? That dissonance in how important Rana is for Sigurd and how important Rana is for the player affects how most people view her. Personally, I remember her very fondly and think she did her job very well. But I wouldn't lie if I remembered Ismare more due to her sacrifice. Even still, Rana is one of the better FE NPCs out there, and for sure one that should be remembered just a little bit more than she is. And here we are, at the end of yet another FE character analysis. Man, I was able to get an entire video out of Rana. I guess I don't think I'll be running out of material anytime soon. Thanks as always to the Green Brigand for his help looking over the script. Yeah, he's on the patron, so I've already said his name, but I want him to know I love him a little bit. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, sub, ring the bell, join the patron, all that stuff, and quote my work on your next big thesis statement. Until next time.